everyone knows the top options for NFL MVP in 2024, but who are some dark horse candidates that could win the award? We'll give you our picks on a Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. You are Locked On NFL, your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to a Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Tyler Rowland, local expert for Locked On Titans. Here with my co-host, Alex Clancy, local expert for Locked On Cardinals. We know the big names, the big options for MVP of the NFL this year. But who are the dark horse candidates? Alex and I are going to give you our picks. And two of the top dark horses are intimately connected. Also, if you had to win one football game, which quarterback would you take from each division? We'll talk NFC and AFC. Before we get into all of that, though, do want to thank you for making Locked On NFL your first listen each and every day. Remember, Monday through Friday, NFL content all year round, always for free. You're not going to beat that anywhere else. Make sure that you get subscribed, stay subscribed. It's your team every day here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Shout out to our everydayers out there tuning in Monday through Friday. Couldn't do it without you guys. And if you aren't an everydayer, you need to be one. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, throw a thumbs up on the video. But with that being said, Alex, looking at some of the top MVP candidates, according to FanDuel Sportsbook, make sure that you guys check out our friends over at FanDuel. Patrick Mahomes is obviously at the top of the list, plus 500. He is the favorite. But then you have Josh Allen, C.J. Stroud, Joe Burrow, and Lamar Jackson rounding out the top five. I think that might be the top five quarterbacks in the NFL. You could make arguments for other guys. I'm sure at least four of those dudes show up on my top four. But outside of those top five, who are some dark horse options that you think could take home the MVP this year? First of all, have you ever seen a quicker crowning than C.J. Stroud? You're right, right. He's actually third on the list of MVP yeah, favorites listen, plus a thousand. We had that. I mean, it's like with the draft, it's like what what is Carolina doing? Like, I'm sure Bryce Young will kind of like they'll both kind of regress back to the mean a little bit, unless he just tries to be the greatest quarterback we've ever seen. Like maybe you know what? Just go back and look at the teams that that Houston played last year. They had the easiest schedule by a long shot. And yeah, he balled out as a rookie. Fantastic. They've got more weapons this year than they did last year. Fantastic. I need to see it at least one more time when when a te- when a you know opposing defensive coordinators and head coaches have a full year of tape on the guy. Like, let's Perfect. chill out for a second. Um, two names for me, um, and one that we share is the third one. Um, two names for me. One is home cooking for me, Kyler Murray, uh, oh, it, and, and the reason why is we know that four hundred all purpose yards and five touchdowns every game does not an MVP make. Okay. The that is kind of a fallacy. It's the Josh Allen fallacy, where right. it's like, look at the look at it's like the Julio Jones fallacy, where it's like you have ten good games, you have six stinkers, and you're still a top five fantasy quarter uh, uh, wide receiver. It's more about how you play during crunch situations, winning the coin flip games, and being the reason why your team wins more than the reason why your team loses in key instances. So Kyler Murray, they've got a revamp roster. The defense isn't great, but They've got firepower on offense. Kyler Murray was an MVP candidate during the first half of the 2021 season towards ACL two years ago, and this is where we are now. But he's a guy, just keep an eye out. He's more of a more of a long shot. One for me, a dude that still doesn't get any respect is Jared Goff. Like, I don't understand when you get in the conversation. What does he have to do to get in the conversation? I'm sorry he's kind of a nerd. Okay. I'm sorry that he doesn't go on ayahuasca trips. I'm sorry that you know he hasn't won a football game with his shoulder falling off like Matt Stafford did in Detroit. Like, I don't know what more you want from the guy. What more do you need to see to make him a guy like, oh, he's an MVP candidate. And then the third he's one. 15th. And, he's 15th. Yeah, he's 15th the on the list are... on FanDuel's odds. He's uh, plus 3,500. Kyler Murray's even lower at plus yeah. 5,000 as the 19th quarterback. So these are definitely, you could get some big returns on FanDuel with, with these bets. But I definitely yeah. understand your logic of and both I, of those guys. Right, and, the, and and I'll transfer this over to you with the guy that we share here, somebody that is maligned by both of us for various reasons. If, right. if, if the Jets win the division, Aaron Rodgers is winning the MVP. Like, we're not having a conversation. He's winning the MVP. So he's the most fun dark horse to kind of talk about because 
He's 100 years old, and we still don't know what he has in the tank. Well, here's what I would tell you, too. Aaron Rodgers definitely has a taste for theatricality. You know, sure. like, I, yeah. Aaron Rodgers does kind of have Batman vibes at this point. Like, this is very nerdy, but uh, the Dark Knight Returns, uh, old Batman comic where he's an old man, kind of puts the suit back on. You know, Aaron Rodgers has a tendency to brood, doesn't have a great connection currently with his family. You know, there are a lot of a lot of ties there where uh, Aaron Rodgers is looking like old Batman out there. So I, I'm with you, and that's one of the big names that popped out to me, Aaron Rodgers. And Rodgers is like 11th on the list. Got guys like Trevor Lawrence, Matthew Stafford, Justin Herbert, Dak Prescott, Brock Purdy ahead of him. Um, and there are more before we even get to the top five. So he's, yeah. you know, 12, 11. He's plus 2,500. And here's the one thing that matters most to me with the Aaron Rodgers MVP conversation is the media will want to give it to him. Because of the Achilles last year, it, there's this weird thing where people kind of want to knock you off. You know, he gets the two MVPs, he goes to the Jets, and I think a lot of people were happy to see the Achilles situation. Not because you're happy to see him injured, but, oh, Aaron Rodgers just knocked off his mantle. There's a lot of, you know, societal conversations about Aaron Rodgers. People just wanted to see him fail, wanted to see him down bad, basically. But we love bringing people back up. It's like, we knocked you down. Now we'll put you back up. You know what I mean? I, I think you're right that if they win the division and they beat out the Dolphins and they beat out the Bills, I, I absolutely think that people will be ready to give the MVP to Aaron Rodgers, which makes him a good bet. But I'm going to do a little cheating for my, my next pick. Hmm. Uh, we said we couldn't do the top five. I made those rules. And I made those <laughs> rules because I'm picking number six. All right, and keeping it, it's Jordan Love. And that's why I said they're they're intimately connected here because it's funny that my two picks are Aaron Rodgers and then the guy who replaced him in Jordan Love. Jordan Love burst onto the scene in the playoffs last year, looked absolutely fantastic on a young team. We've talked about the Packers being an ascending group. And if Jordan Love takes that next step, people love a Green Bay Packers quarterback. There are just certain things that give us the warm and fuzzies. It's like a nice hot bowl of chicken noodle soup when you're sick. That's the Green Bay Packers quarterback situation. You just feel better when it's good. So I think people will also want to. Remember, this award is voted on by humans. And, and the people voting in the media, media people love narratives. That I love a good narrative. I mean, I'm not going to shy away from it. I love a good story. That's what people in the media like the most. And Jordan Love is a good story. Aaron Rodgers' comeback is a good story. Uh, another guy who I want to put in there is Justin Herbert. I think, it say they win the division, say they yeah. beat out Kansas City, mm -hmm. Jim Harbaugh bursts on the scene, they go 11-6, and six. you know, Justin Herbert plays real, real well. Right now he is plus 2,000, so just a little bit better than Aaron Rodgers and uh, a, a step ahead of Jared Goff. I think Justin Herbert is a guy who deserves consideration. But let us know down below in the comments if you have any dark horse MVP candidates yeah. that you want to mention as well. Alex, do you have any other options that you want just, to throw out there? No, just one quick thing here. What's more chilling? The Simpsons predicting the future or the Green Bay Packers doing the same thing, rinse and repeat three straight times? Like, I, wasn't the, was it, what was the stat? I think it was the first eight or nine starts of Aaron Rodgers' career and Jordan Love's career in their first year starting. Exact yep. completion percentage, exact touchdown, exact interception, exact yardage. Like, yep. to a T, we are in a simulation. It's the yep. wildest. And Jordan Love came out of nowhere like Aaron, like Aaron Rodgers. He dropped. It's like, what, is he going to yep. sit? Is he going to play? It's like, it was, how long are other stars. organizations going to see take the seat? Oh, maybe you sit a quarterback for a couple years and he's ready to play. Maybe you sit him first. But that's another conversation for a different yeah, well, maybe maybe the Matrix will mix it up because we're catching on to you, Buster. Uh, but with that being said, we're going to move forward. If you had to win one game, which quarterback would you take in each division in the NFL? We're going to start with the NFC. Before we do, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts 
For your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car, wait, the MVP. And it won't be a dark horse this time. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. All right, Alex, let's continue this Thursday edition of the Locked on NFL podcast. We talked about our Dark Horse MVP candidates and their odds on FanDuel Sportsbook. Now we want to look at each division and pick which quarterback we would take if we had to win one game. This isn't a full season. This isn't five-year plan. This is one game you got to win. Who are you taking before we dive into it, I do want to thank you again for making Locked On NFL your first listen each and every day, Monday through Friday, NFL content all year round, always for free. It's summertime right now. The NFL is in its quiet period, you could say, but we're still churning out five days of content per week here on the Locked On NFL podcast. So make sure that you get subscribed, stay subscribed to your team every day. With that being said, Alex, I'll leave it up to you. What's the first division? that you want to look at in the NFC. Let's let's just stay with the NFC North with all the Jordan Love and Aaron Rodgers talk. So this is one of the most fun divisions in football now for all of yes. the different reasons than it was before. Because you always, well, I, dominance is a thing that cannot be overstated. Just because you're bored with Tiger Woods winning majors every year doesn't mean you shouldn't take a step back and look. Patrick Mahomes, same thing. Tom Brady, whatever it is. It was Aaron Rodgers for a long time. It's no longer Minnesota had their chance. That was gone in an instance. And now it's wide open. You got three extremely young quarterbacks and the elder statement in Jared Goff to pick for one game. I'm taking Jared Goff. And I think that's I like, I don't know if Jordan Love has an honorable mention here. Jared Goff has done it before. The other kids haven't. So I'm taking Jared Goff. Huh. I, I figured you would, as most of the people listening know, you yeah. are a Jared Goff truther. That's true. The truther. I, I'm taking Jordan Love. Okay. I, I So, Jared Goff may be the more reliable quarterback, the more experienced quarterback right now, but for me in a one-game scenario, and this is honestly going to be a common theme in the conversation that we have, I yeah. want a guy with athleticism. I want mobility. I want the ability to make second reaction, all schedule plays. A guy that if the pocket is collapsing on him, he's going to be able to use his legs and get out of there. So I get that Jordan Love is more experienced in a one game scenario. You got to default to that. I understand that. But for me, I want the high end upside. I want the guy who's going to make the crazy play that was unexpected that you can never draw out in the sand. I'm actually going to take Jordan love but it was a tough debate and i'm not gonna lie to you alex and to the people out there i thought long and hard about this while i was in the shower today because this was a tough one i spent a good five minutes just staring at the tiles trying to figure out who i was gonna pick here and i landed with jordan love so it's a tough conversation but i'll go love but i understand the the love for golf as well yeah let's pivot to the nfc south here uh mud in the muck um it's it's kind of a lesser of all evils you know with this just uh right. ragtag right. group of quarterbacks uh <laughs> kirk cousins a guy who can't win in prime time which kind of should just remove him from this and listen this is one game in a vacuum i'm taking baker mayfield like you know it's just like i can't you can't take garrett Derek Carr. you can't take bryce young at this point kirk cousins has shown that he's only as good as how easy the setup is so baker mayfield will run through a wall for all of his teammates I trust Baker. We saw it crazily when he played that game against the uh, when he played that game for the uh, for the Rams a couple like two years ago where he got mm -hmm. traded. He played short week. Van Jefferson touchdown with thirty seconds left. He ran the team down the field. We've seen it from him. So I would take Baker. You know what's crazy is I thought that you might go with Kirk Cousins here yeah. just because, you know, it's to me it's a similar conversation about Jared Goff and the experience. And obviously Kirk Cousins is a better quarterback than the national perception of him is. Yeah. Like he's when healthy, he's a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. And I mean, that's not fun to say because it's much more fun to clown people nowadays. That's what yeah. that, you know, everybody gets off on being negative. Who can be the most negative? Who can make the big joke? 
blah, 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 blah. That's just the way that the society is nowadays. But Kirk Cousins is a good butt of a joke, but he's a good quarterback. Now, with that being said, (laughs) I'm with you. I'm taking Baker Mayfield. All right, at the end of the day, I want somebody who's willing to die out there, not somebody who's taking Tuesday off. All right, that's a throwback to the Minnesota Vikings. That made me so mad that Kirk Cousins is just like, I'm taking off every Tuesday no matter what. Like, I'm sorry, as a kid who was raised on Kobe Bryant, Mamba mentality, psycho work ethic, blah, 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 waking up 3 a.m., like, that's the ethos that I like um, in my professional athletes. That's what I gravitate towards. And when Kirk Cousins is telling me he's taking off every Tuesday just, you know, to relax, I'm like, dude, like, you're going to get beat in prime time by players who don't take off Tuesday right. and who are just willing to work through that. And Baker Mayfield is willing to work through that. So I'm with you. If if I'm going down, I'm going down with somebody who will die out there. You know, I made a decision last night that I'd die for it. And that's Baker Mayfield. And uh, I'm with you. I'd go with Baker as well. Um, we'll move to the NFC East where I think it's very interesting and I know that this is going to be controversial. I'm going to agree with you. I know. I, yeah. Go ahead. I'm taking Dak Prescott. Yeah, so am I. I, t- I, think, I think that Dak Prescott is a better quarterback than yeah. Jalen Hurts. Like, yeah. I know that, that's, that, that that maybe sounds crazy. But if you put Dak Prescott on the Eagles, I think the Eagles are better. And I think Dak is better. Like, yeah. I, I think that Dak is the better quarterback. He still gives me the mobility. I think he's got a better arm than Jalen Hurts. I, I'm going Dak. I know I agree. He's a better thrower of the football. He's a more traditional quarterback, even yep. though he's mobile. But he you know. still gives you the mobility too, you know? A lot of Jalen Hurts balls are, AJ, go get it. Devonta, go right. get it. You know, and listen, Dak is more calculated. Yes, he makes more mistakes. He's also asked to do a million more things than Jalen Hurts is. They run the ball. They play good defense there. Jalen Hurts isn't throwing the ball 55 times a game. Dak, the ball is in his hands. He is the first, second, and third option with the ball in his hands, especially with the run game being so bad as it was last year. I'm taking Dak. I know he hasn't won a playoff game, but – or he hasn't – you know, he, he shrinks in the playoffs. I'm still taking Dak. And then pivoting no, to the NFC that. West, this one is the fascinating one. I'm going to go first. Um, I'm taking Matthew Stafford. Uh, Matthew Stafford, he's done it. He's a stud. He just wins games he shouldn't. The, they've they've played out of their shoes with the talent that they had. They got rid of Jalen Ramsey. That, they had Aaron Donald on defense and a bunch of kids. And Bobby Wagner – and then you know you have you have Cooper Cup and before Puka Nakua like they had a bunch of rag like Daryl Henderson and Cam Akers and whatever they did with that offense they were running the ball it was like that movie Rockstar didn't matter who the running back was he'd produce <laughs> I'm taking Matthew Stafford you know what we just continue to agree I know that Brock Purdy just went to the Super Bowl and all that but Matthew Stafford has been one of the most underrated quarterbacks of our generation. Uh, because he played on those bad Lions teams for so long. But I agree with you. Matthew Stafford is the most talented quarterback, in my opinion. I mean, maybe Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray might be the most talented in that division. That's worth a conversation. But I'm with you. I'm going with Matt Stafford. He's been to the pinnacle. He's won the biggest game. He's tough as nails, man. One of the toughest quarterbacks that's ever mm-hmm. played, in my opinion. He's he, And the Titans' new coach, Brian Callahan, has talked about that as well. Stafford's one of the toughest people he's ever been around. So that might influence how I feel, but yeah, hundred percent. I'm going Matthew Stafford as well. So we went, you went Jared golf. I went Jordan love, but then we went Dak Prescott, Baker Mayfield, Matthew Stafford, mostly agreement there. Let us know your picks down below. With that being said, let's go to the AFC. This episode of locked on NFL Thursday is brought to you by FanDuel. NBA finals are over. Baseball is upon us. And you know, what's going to be right around the corner futures for NFL MVP mm-hmm. odds like we talked about in the first segment. Right. Kyler Murray at plus 5,000, 50 to 1. Aaron Rodgers, 20 to 1. Or uh, Justin Herbert, 21. Aaron Rodgers, 25 to 1. FanDuel, the big deal is they've got you covered regardless. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks. You can use to bet on everything from who's going to hit a home run in any baseball game Who's going to win NFL MVP, division winners, and everything in between? Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and add a big win to your summer bucket list. Fanduel, America's number one sports book.
Locked on NFL Thursday, Alex Clancy, locked on Cardinals, Tyler Rowland, locked on Titans. We are locked on NFL Thursday. Thank you for making locked on NFL your first listen, free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Dude, camp is three weeks away. Like this is getting real, really yep. quick. Do you remember when the offseason was so long? The offseason was so long, Tyler. All we had to look forward to was list season. And I feel like what the NFL did, doing a whole event out of the schedule release has yep. bridged everything yep. from the draft to schedule. It's like, Oh baby doll, we got at least one thing a month. And, and, we and can imagine run if that. they, uh, if they get that new rule or whatever to go through, uh, where they change the schedule of the off season, we'll go straight from that right now would be like OTAs and the ramp yeah. up and all of that. So it, it, I mean, the NFL could just completely monopolize the whole 12 month calendar. And I gotta be honest with you. I wouldn't <laughs> complain. I wouldn't complain at all either. Remember, locked on NFL, your team every day. So, Tyler, AFC, we're going to save the AFC North until the end because Tyler has internal struggles when it comes to that division, almost daily when we talk about it on this show. So we're talking about the best quarterback or the one quarterback out of each division you would choose task to win one game when it was absolutely necessary. Let's start with the AFC West. Because this yes. will take 15 seconds, yeah. right? Patrick Mahomes. I mean, Until what, it's not. what else Let's is there just to say? move yep. on. We don't have to talk about anything else. Let's do the AFC yep. South, okay? This is where it gets a little fun, okay? This is your division. You take over. Well, I mean, I, I think that it, it is it is interesting. It truly is. Because I think that before last year, you would go Trevor Lawrence? Yep. Probably. And yeah. wouldn't wouldn't feel too great about it, quite honestly. And I don't think anybody could. I don't think the Jags feel too great about it. They just are doing what they got to do. But like we were talking about earlier, he may be crowned prematurely, and we're going to find out. But right now, how could you pick anybody other than C.J. Stroud? But I am a Titans guy. I think that Will Levis can be better than Anthony Richardson. I think that Will Levis could be better than Trevor Lawrence, honestly. I think he's a more like naturally talented, stronger arm, quicker release, all of that. But you can't trust Will Levis, and you can't trust Anthony Richardson. If you would tell me that injuries are off, and I know that no one's going to get injured, maybe I would rock with Anthony Richardson because you get the rushing ability. He's basically like a like a Cam Newton prototype. You know, it, whether he works out, we will see. A lot of people high on him, but the injuries are scary. If I yeah. knew he was staying healthy, I would consider other options. But I don't see how you could pick anybody but C.J. Stroud right now, even though they had that bloodbath in Houston, but. He didn't really prove it in the playoffs in any kind of particular way. That was a team blowout against the Browns in the first round, not C.J. Stroud just being absolutely miraculous. So there's we've never seen him in a huge scenario actually go superstar mode, but I would still go with C.J. Stroud right now. I think. I mean, it's close. I, I'll give I'll give Ty to the incumbent. I'll give Ty to Trevor Lawrence because his floor is mm -hmm. higher. He's played more years. His floor's He came back 27 nothing in the playoffs. So if you're looking at big moments and big stages, Trevor Lawrence has a pelt on his wall that I wouldn't say that C.J. Stroud has. Right, because for those that forget, it was against the Chargers that completely, mm -hmm. who completely imploded, and the Jaguars came back. Like, Trevor Lawrence has shown what I call unlocked on Cardinals, oh my God moments. He's shown them, and they're spectacular. And then he can't hold onto the ball and get strip sacked three times in a game. It's like, this doesn't compute. So Jacksonville, like Kyler Murray in Arizona, he's fighting against the current with a dysfunctional organization. Houston, overnight, got rid of Bill O'Brien, brought in Nick Casario, and things now with D'Amico Ryans are immediately functional. So while the situation is better in Houston, I'm still going to take Trevor Lawrence for one more year if I had to pick one game, and that could change very, very quickly. But I, I will take Trevor Lawrence with that. Um, Let's go AFC East. <laughs> go ahead. We know it's not Tua coming from you. So Yeah, who, definitely who not. Listen, game? I, I've said it's going to be a common theme, and it is a common theme. I want that mobility when it counts. I know that Aaron Rodgers has won a Super Bowl. He's got multiple MVPs, and it's one game. So Aaron Rodgers' age isn't really as much of a factor uh, as it would be in maybe other discussions. So I could 100% see somebody answering Aaron Rodgers here. But I'm going with Josh Allen. I, I, his just ability to make the crazy play in the crazy moment when everything is stacked against him. The play is schematically lost. The offensive line loses. 
Uh, the quarterback scrambling out, and there's a linebacker right on him. Josh Allen just finds ways to make plays and big moments and crazy situations. So I'm I'm taking I'm taking Josh Allen. There's no yeah, way it's I, close. I, it's yeah. close, but I'll take it, Josh. I, mean, I get the Aaron Rodgers argument, yeah. though, obviously. Yeah, I mean he's the perfect mix of you know Cam Newton and Brett Favre. Like he's just this thing that we've never really seen before from a quarterback. Cam Newton was never a good passer of the football. I don't care what people. He wasn't. He wasn't. It wasn't. His, it wasn't great. Uh, Josh Allen right. is. Um, Aaron Rodgers, it's just, I don't know, man. I just, yeah, I, I think you're right. And listen, if it's wrong, we're going to have more questions about Josh Allen at the end of the year than we will about Aaron Rodgers. Like, if Aaron Rodgers comes right. in, he's healthy, plays 17 weeks, and he plays Green Bay Packers. Josh Rodgers Allen, football, there are going to be questions. Yeah, for sure. And then the the fun one, I will go first, and I'll let you end the show with this. Tyler is a huge Ravens v. Bengals person atop yeah. the AFC North. And we and there, you know, there are little rumblings with the Steelers. There's little rumblings with, with with the Browns throughout the year. But I think we can remove those two from this conversation. One game, one win. I'm taking Joe Burrow, even though everything should say to take Lamar Jackson. Joe Burrow can throw a team back in a game, and Lamar Jackson can't. I think it's as simple yep. as that. Um, yep. They run the ball. They control the tempo, especially with Derrick Henry. It's going to be different this year. There's going to be a lot less possessions, I'd assume. You're going to try and have the ball 34, 35 minutes a game and lead the NFL with that. But Joe Burrow can throw for 450 yards and five touchdowns, and Lamar Jackson can't when he needs to. He hasn't proven that he could. So I'm taking Joe Burrow. Here's the reality. It's a one-game scenario, which in a do-or-die one-game scenario, that's basically a playoff game. It's yeah. a prime time. It's, you know, it's a playoff game. That's what it is. We're talking about winning one playoff game. And Lamar Jackson has just simply not been good enough in the playoffs. It's just the reality. And Joe Burrow, while not winning the Super Bowl, he got the Cincinnati Bengals to the Super Bowl. And if Aaron Donald is a split second later, he finds oh. Jamar Chase streaking down the sideline wide open. And the Bengals win a Super Bowl. Look. Lamar Jackson may be the better player throughout the mm -hmm. regular season. He's going to put up more stats. He's going to be more phenomenal. He's going to make more oh-my-God moments, as you like to say. But in a one-game scenario, I need somebody to throw the ball, maybe bring us back down, keep their composure, be the same guy all game long, not have to rely on the legs. I'm going with Joe Burrow. I, I, again, I, I have been prioritizing mobility, but in this scenario, I've seen Lamar in big-time games too often just not get the job done. And in Burrow's short time with a terrible offensive line, I've seen Burrow find a way to get the job done. So, yeah, I, yeah. I'd go with Joe Burrow there. And, and I hey, I had Bengals. And then last year, I had Ravens. And then this yes. year, I'm back. I'm going Bengals again. So, I'm sure we'll talk about that sort of stuff as we get closer to the regular season. But, yeah, I'm rocking with Joe Burrow as well. But Yeah, it, it, it's interesting. You know, and I know we got to get out of here in a sec. It's like... It's such a double-edged sword. Like, they were damned if you do, damned if you don't with that pick at five. Penny Sewell, protect. You don't have that number one wide receiver. Look, lest we forget, Joe Burrow overcame eight sacks. Eight sacks in the playoffs and got a win and made it, it to the nine. Super Bowl. Nine? It yeah. Was and listen, nine. Lamar Jackson is – if it's almost unfair to talk about that narrative like he can't throw the ball. He, he can Okay. Yeah, like can. that's not that's not a thing. But it's that is different from big moments and getting it yeah. done. Like I'm not yeah. saying he can't get it done in big moments because he can't throw. No, he could throw just fine. He's just it's like any other quarterback that any pocket passer that you want to mention all the time that wasn't clutch and couldn't get it done. Like right. to me, it, it, it's more of a clutch situation clutch. conversation than it is about his skill set, you know? Yeah. Yep. No, absolutely. I agree. And it, it's just going to yep. be fascinating with Russell Wilson there with Deshaun Watson there. I, why would you ever, <laughs> the AFC North, I mean, is the winner going to win 10 games like that division? That. Anyways, we, we're going to talk about that a lot this off season, but this was a oh, fun, yeah, uh, for sure. fun little exercise. Absolutely. But with that being said, that is going to do it for us today, folks. I am one of your hosts, Tyler Rowland, local expert for locked on Titans here with my co-host, Alex Clancy, local expert for locked on Cardinals. That's going to do it for locked on NFL Thursday. As I tell you guys every week, Start your weekend early and stay safe out there.